God, we magnify your name. We love you, Jesus. You've been good, God, and we thank you for it. Appreciate all of your kindness, Lord. All of your blessings. I love you tonight. I really love you tonight, Lord. I really love you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to God. I bless your name, I bless your name, I bless your name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Amen. Do you feel the nearness of the Lord tonight? He's in this house and we appreciate so much the coming of the Lord and the presence that we can feel here. Our God has been so very kind to us many, many, many ways. And uh, that he brought us here to this meeting, gave us the opportunity to join together, hear the good word of the Lord and worship and honor the Lord with all of our heart is so very important and valuable. Thank you, Brother Garza and brethren, for financing and propagating this wonderful conference, preserving apostolic truth and holiness. Praise God. And we, we concur with the necessity and the importance of having such a meeting. Thank you, Brother Klon, for directing us in the service tonight leading us closer to the presence of the Lord. Amen. I look forward to all of the brethren who will be preaching. I'm going to be here, the good Lord willing, to hear every man that ministers the Word of God. And I have come with a hungry heart, very interested and very anxious that the Lord would visit before I get back on that airplane and go back to the Valley of the Sun. I wrote somebody recently and told them, I said, I, I greet you from God's country. And then I put in parentheses, albeit it's a little warmer than he's used to right now. Amen. But uh, I'm glad to be here. And before we go home, I really do want to hear from the Lord. And uh, I thought Brother Hyler was going to take us where I feel like the Holy Ghost would like to take us tonight in the presence of the Lord and brokenness before Him and help, help from His presence, help from His presence. It is becoming increasingly more important to me that we know what the mind of the Lord is and that we find a way to follow Him. There are multiplied thousands of people that if they could just get through the doors of our churches, if they could just feel this precious Holy Ghost, if they could just one time drink deep that clear, cool water, Holy Ghost anointing, they would be converted, forever live for God. Amen. We need a visitation of the Lord when we come together. Praise God. Again, thank you, Brother Garza. I admire you. I love you. And I appreciate the opportunity to share the ministry in your pulpit to this great congregation of people. Turning in our Bibles tonight to the Psalms, to the 119th Psalm, beginning at verse number 99. And then also we will be reading from the book of 1 Corinthians in the second chapter and verse number 14. I'm in a very precarious place tonight. I feel very, 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 very limited in our abilities. But I feel very strong that this is what um, the Lord has placed on my heart for this service tonight. Amen. Psalm, uh, 119th Psalm and verse 99. I have more understanding than my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more 
than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have recently been looking at this scripture and uh, I, have, I have really asked God to help me to understand. I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients. I do not believe the psalmist was saying, I'm smarter than my teachers because the student is never more knowledgeable than the teacher. And I don't feel that way tonight. But I believe there is a touch of God that can come to us and help us. To the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, in verse number 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither, neither, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Neither can he know them. I believe the Bible says, because they are spiritually discerned. I don't even know that I have a title for this. I don't even know. But I do know that I want the Lord to help us. And I believe that He will tonight. Let's pray together. Heavenly Jesus, we thank You for every good thing. For the opportunity to be here. I thank You, God, that You counted us faithful by bringing us here together. Now, God, these are Your precious people. And you have a will. And that will, God, I pray that it will be accomplished here in this place tonight. By the help of the Holy Ghost, we'll love you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. And everybody together said amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing as long as you've been standing tonight. I've got to get this microphone out of the way here, and uh, my glasses that I'm wearing are only good if I can get things close enough, and um, me in this pulpit, amen, it's a little further down than I'm familiar with, amen, and I'm having a hard time reading, so if I put Moses in the ark and... Uh, we preach about glory be to Jesus or whatever. You just help us out tonight. Praise God. Amen. I am, I appreciate, I appreciate the words of Brother Klon. They were embarrassing in the, in the introduction tonight. But I do appreciate, I do appreciate him setting, as it were, uh, this opportunity to one more time visit in the Word of the Lord and in the Spirit of the Lord. I have, I have the privilege of looking back at Pentecost from the vantage point of 50 plus years of living for God. I was trying to remember the first time that I ever set foot in this building I don't believe that this building was orientated at that time as it is now. Seems if my memory serves me correctly, there were steps back here somewhere. And um, we came in, and the platform used to be on that end of the building. I think it was perhaps 1961, 1963, somewhere in that vicinity, probably before the majority of this congregation discovered America, but um, uh, it was quite some time ago. I came with my father. I was just a child. There was a man preaching in this building at that time that has had a profound effect on this area in Apostolic Pentecost, it was when he came and preached in the church that I grew up in in Fresno that the wedding bands were taken off. It was when he came and preached that there was the introduction to deep spiritual things. 
and a concept got in the congregation that, that prior perhaps had not been there. And it was, it was my introduction to the things of God. I can tell you, and you have heard me say this in times past, I can tell you that it ignited something in my spirit that I have never forgotten. And so, from the vantage point of looking back over Pentecost, I have seen a lot of changes in Pentecost. I have seen Pentecost come from the mentality of poor Pentecostals and opposite side of the track mentality, hang our heads down low because we were the off-scouring of the earth and religious circles. And I've watched us as we graduated into, into arenas of real apostolic uh, in gathering and uh, revival and anointing. Somebody say praise the Lord. The song that we heard here tonight, sung by Elder Pace, there was a day when a song like that would have embarrassed people in Pentecost, and, uh, but not anymore. And so there's been a lot of good changes, a lot of coming up, if I can use that term. Uh, God was good to a lot of us, faithfulness, and our parents and their tithing and their faithfulness, we have been able to reap some of the benefits, and we're not living like we used to live. But in some of the changes, and I'm not going to be negative here tonight, or try not to be, in some of the changes, I am concerned that they have not all been good for us. They have not all been proper in our pursuit of the things of God. Uh, we have begun to equate high church with shouting church. We have begun to equate a real move of God with a real fast song. We have begun to really feel like that we have not had a lot of good church until we've had a lot of perspiration, a lot of jumping, a lot of shouting. And I do enjoy that. And uh, the church that I pastor does run the aisles and they do shout and rejoice. But that's not the high water mark for us. That's just an outgrowth of our relationship in honoring the Lord and worshiping Him and uh, praising Him. There are very few services that that the shouting takes precedence over the preaching. Very few services where we are going to say, well, that's enough. We've had a good time. Let's all go home. Somewhere there is something in us that believes that the highest that we can give to God is to hear Him. And not only to hear Him, but to be affected by what we hear. And for there to be some changes affected in our life. So that when we leave, we are leaving nearer to the Lord than when we came. When we leave, we are leaving with a deeper appreciation of the things of God. We are leaving with a greater determination that come this time tomorrow, I am still going to be walking in the presence of the Lord. I am still going to be walking in this truth. I am still going to be following hard after His Spirit. Somebody said, praise the Lord. And so, I am, I'm trying to get somewhere tonight in my, in my thoughts and in my direction. I am looking for, when we come to the house of God, I am looking for a visitation of God's presence. And one of the reasons that I believe that it is so important and it is so incumbent upon us to not only hear the Word of God and to react to the Word of God, but it's important to us that we grow more familiar with the operation of God's Holy Spirit. And if you don't mind me saying this tonight, and you will not be offended at me 
for saying it. We're not going to get that by dancing on the floor and hanging from the ceiling and swinging from the chandeliers every time we come to the house of the Lord. I'm looking for something to provoke us to a deeper relationship with God. Something that will promote prayer in our lives. Something that will promote the deep operation of God's Spirit in the house when we get together. Let somebody say amen. amen. I think about the Word of the Lord in the book of Exodus in the 19th chapter. It teaches us that the Lord made this comment that He wanted a nation of priest an entire nation of priests it was the will of god that he would have a people that would follow after him dedicated consecrated separated unto him amen you cannot separate to god until you have a concept about the purity of the lord and what he desires and so he said that I want a nation of priests. Not just a nation of preachers, uh, but a nation of people whose concepts towards God are those of consecration, separation, and dedication. Is this all right tonight? In the book of Leviticus chapter 10 and verse number 10, talking about the Aaronic priesthood, and Aaron to be separated unto the Lord, said of this purpose to delivery of his spirit to mankind, that there would be, there would be at the ability to discern and to put a difference between the holy and the unholy, that there would be that discerning to teach the difference between the clean and the unclean. Solomon, when he has gone to Gibeah, the Bible tells us that he makes a request of the Lord. And that request of the Lord is, I want to have an understanding heart. I want to be able to judge uh, thy people. And then he says these words that I may discern between good and bad. I want to discern between good and bad. In the book of Ezekiel in the 44th chapter, talking about a restored priesthood, worshiping again. Uh, in the temple and offering up to God sacrifices of dedicated things that they would know the difference between holy and profane that they could discern between the clean and the unclean the apostle Paul referring back to this requirement in the priesthood would talk about it in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14, talking about strong meat that for those of full age who by reason of having their senses exercised uh, would be able to discern between the good and uh, the evil. Praise the Lord. Between the good and uh, the evil. That, that ability to walk so in the presence of the Lord. That ability to so know the mind of the Spirit. That, that touch in the heart that would give the ability with just a little bit of familiarity and just a little bit of being in the vicinity to discern whether this is right or whether this is wrong. Amen? Whether this is good or whether this is bad. Whether this is holy or whether it is not holy. Whether this is clean or whether it is unclean. One of the things that I'm looking for in the preservation of apostolic truths and holiness is I'm looking for an opportunity to go back 
to the presence of the Lord and the anointing of heaven to come upon the apostolic church again where the purity of God is elevated, where the holiness of God is not the garment we put on when we walk through the doors of the congregation and it's not the attitude that we pick up when we make it to a Sunday night service, but the holiness and purity before God is what we put on at the altar and what we carry with us out the door and what we carry with us to our home and what we wear when we get on the job to affect the world that needs God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. To have that ability to be able to walk in the Spirit, to be able to stay away from ungodliness, to be able to protect our children, to be able to preserve our apostolic homes, uh, to be able to keep uh, a good attitude and a good spirit uh, in operation in the church. Uh, I've just got something on my spirit tonight. Uh, I don't believe that there's a devil in hell uh, or out of hell uh, that can stop the apostolic uh, church. Uh, I do not believe that there is any situation uh, that could come to the church uh, that could stop the apostolic uh, revival that God has uh, on his mind for his people. Praise the Lord somebody. Uh, I believe with all of my heart uh, that what God is looking for uh, and what God is yearning for uh, and what God is desiring uh, from our hearts uh, is a hunger after him, uh, a desire after him, uh, a purity before him. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. There is a calling to step up. There is a calling to be counted. There is a calling to come out from among them and be a separate. There is a calling to be identified with the things of God in a measure that the end time, uh, amen, uh, is ordained of God to have. Uh, I don't want to be part uh, of a weak and anemic church. Uh, I don't want to be a part uh, of a congregation that cannot uh, get its traction in the Holy Ghost, uh, that cannot uh, get the sin out of the church, uh, that cannot not uh, get the operation of the Holy Ghost uh, in the house of God again. Uh, I'm looking for that opportunity. Come on, somebody. Let's step up in the Holy Ghost tonight. Come on, somebody. Let's get a hold of the things of God again. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to launch into waters that are probably too deep to swim in here tonight. But it's the only thing that I can feel any direction for in this service. And it's the only thing that's on my heart for tonight. The burden of my spirit. We are living in the time when there has never been better pulpit preaching than today. We are living in the time when there has never been been more eloquence from the pulpit amen that's obvious you're not going to hear it tonight but that there's never been more eloquence there's never been a time uh, in at least in my mind thinking when there has been more uh, uh, of that pulpit tearing where where you can you can go to meetings and you can hear some of the finest that you've ever heard uh, in all of your life uh, that leaves your tongue hanging out uh, and your your mind is blown uh, with all the things that you, that you heard and you picked up uh, but I'm also going to tell you uh, that there's never been a time uh, when there has been more of an absolute need uh, for anointed uh, preaching uh, not just preaching that that it sounds good uh, not just for preaching that 
feels good not just for preaching that has a good effect on the congregation but the kind of preaching that has some punch to it the kind of preaching that has some anointing behind it the kind of preaching that will break yokes the kind of preaching that will tear down strongholds come on the kind of preaching that will dig out deep sin not the kind of preaching that will get a hold of dark hearts and wash them with the red blood of Jesus Christ I've grown increasingly disturbed and this is not this is not uh, this is not uh, pick up the baseball bat and start slapping around I'm not doing that here tonight but I have grown increasingly concerned by going to service after service and meeting after meeting where you show up and the preaching takes us right to seemingly the edge of a real Holy Ghost break through, cross over, whatever. And it just seemed like we get there poised to go and then we don't go. And folks come in, they've heard, they've heard, they've heard that God is able to deliver them from their bondage. They have heard that the Holy Ghost is able to heal them in their afflictions. They have heard that the Spirit of God is able to put their families back together when they are broken and severed. And yet we bring them in to the services and bring them in to the meetings. And it's just another good sermon that we've heard. It's just another good shout and jump. And we go home with the same brokenness. I hope I'm all right tonight. We go home with the same bondage. We go home with the same morose feeling in our spirit. We go home with the same, the same old attitude that we came in with. And the man that came in with his bondage of sin goes out with his bondage of sin. And the individual that came in with their arrogance towards God goes out with their arrogance towards God. And the fornicating youth go out with their sin still intact. And nothing changes. And nothing shakes us. And nothing moves us. But I got something on my mind for the PATH conference tonight. I've got the mind of the Spirit for this service tonight. God is looking uh, for some folks uh, that'll get some Holy Ghost discernment, uh, that'll get some Holy Ghost anointing. I'm not trying to be ugly, but God's looking for some folks uh, that'll draw nigh to the Spirit of the Lord, uh, that will say, I'll pay any price. Uh, I'll do whatever it takes. Uh, I just don't want to leave here like I came. I'm going to tell you something, brother. Amen. I've been at this business way too long. Amen. 27 years pastoring the same assembly. Preaching for more years than that. Amen. I can discern and I can feel when there are things that rise up in the congregation that try to stifle and stop uh, the moving of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I've just come to serve notice on the devil tonight. Uh, you can sit there if you want to. Uh, with your, I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about that old spirit uh, that wants to walk into this house uh, and wants to stop uh, this congregation from drawing nigh to God. Uh, I've met your old nasty hide before. It does not intimidate me uh, to stand up here and to preach it again. Something needs to break loose in PATH conference. Uh, something needs to break loose in the first night. Uh, something needs to break loose uh, among our churches. Uh, something needs to break loose upon this preacher. Hallelujah. They said of the prophet, 
They said of the prophet, come on, let's go hear the prophet. He is to us as a pleasant song. He tickles our ears. He's the best you ever listened to. He's got a fan club you can't believe. You can, you can swap his CDs and his tapes and you can get a premium for them. And that's all they got out of the preaching of the prophet. But that's not all that God had on his mind while he was preaching. God had eternity on his mind. God had judgment on his mind. God had the preservation of his people upon his mind. But the only thing they could get out of it was it's like a pleasant song to us. Hey, could I preach tonight? Amen. Could we take the admonition of the New Testament of the apostle that said try the spirits to see whether they be of God or not. Could we get something in us that so hungers and thirsts after God that we will feel for Him, that we will reach for Him, that we will call to Him? I think of the Word of God in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And verse number 9, where, where the word of the Lord talks about the workings of Satan and with lying wonders and, and with miracles, he would come and he would, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, began to deceive folks. Amen. It's going to be the ploy of the Antichrist in the end time that he is going to play upon the weakness of the apostolic church and it's going to be with miracles signs wonders it's going to be it's going to be amazing it's going to be absolutely astonishing uh, the things that he's going to do and folks are going to say how can it be wrong if there's healing in it uh, and how can it be wrong if there's miracles in it uh, and how can it be wrong if there's a good feel to it uh, but I've got something on my heart tonight uh, it's not going to be the miracles Miracles that get us out of here. It's not going to be the lying wonders that get us out of here. It's not going to be the works that get us out of here. It's going to be the preached word of God. And it's going to be obedience to that word. It's going to be faithfulness to this word. And it's going to be faithfulness to the Spirit of God. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope this is all right with you. But even while I preach, there's two congregations hearing me. Amen. There's one congregation reaching with all of your heart. And there's another congregation saying, when he is he going to be through through in this house? He's too loud. He's too noisy. And he's not making a lot of sense. But oh, I'm telling you that the Lord wants to move into this house tonight. That the Holy Ghost wants to move in on this congregation. There are some men and women that have been praying. If you can use anything, I want you to use me. If you're going to touch anybody, I want you to touch me if there's anything in the Holy Ghost uh, that you want to pour out I want to be a recipient of the outpoured spirit uh, of the almighty God uh, oh I hear this preacher tonight somebody's going to go home full uh, somebody's going to get it uh, somebody's going to walk in the Holy Ghost hallelujah 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 the things of God cannot be known by the carnal man. The Bible teaches us, but as many as are led by the Spirit of God, Romans 8, 14, they are become the sons of God. They are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are 
the sons of God. They are the sons of God. Led by the Spirit of the Lord. Led by the Holy Ghost. Operating in the Spirit. I'm not talking about all the time. Going around with your eyes closed. Muttering under your breath. And feeling the, this, this, I don't know what you call it. This, 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 whatever out there. That's it's always super duper spiritual and I'm the only one that's got it. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about walking close in the spirit of the Lord. Hey, apostolic church, it is the heartbeat of God. We got this Holy Ghost. We got this good touch of God. And we got it for one purpose and one purpose alone. To be called the children of the Lord. And so we cannot discern with the carnal mind the things of God. For the text said they are spiritually Discerned. They are spiritually discerned. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 The writer, the psalmist said, I know more. I know more than my teachers. I have more understanding than all my teachers. He said, I understand more than the ancients. And I've already made it in my opening remarks that it was not knowledge, but it was the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. It was the wisdom of God. Amen. The psalmist was talking about was talking about understanding the deep things of God. He was talking about understanding revealed truth and the revealed will of God. An old lie, even though it's an ancient lie, is still a lie. An old falsehood, no matter how many times it's been repeated, if it's a falsehood, it's still a falsehood. Do you hear me tonight? Amen. Just because knowledge has been around a long time does not make it the truth or right. And so the psalmist was saying, I didn't get this understanding from mankind. I didn't get this understanding out of the books. I didn't get this understanding by sitting at the feet of my instructors. But I'm talking about an understanding and a wisdom from the Lord Himself. Oh, God have mercy. I know this is disjointed tonight, but this is what's burdening my heart. And I'm praying that the Holy Ghost will put it all together in your mind. You cannot sit down and just figure out how you're going to get close to God. Somewhere you've got to walk in the Spirit. There's got to come a moment in our life when we say, God, I want this more than I want anything else in the world. Hallelujah. 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 Spiritually discern. Spiritually discern. Romans 9 and 13 tells us, Jacob, have I loved, but Esau... Have I hated? How could God make that statement? Hebrews 12 tells us a little bit about why God could make that statement. When it says that he was a fornicator and he was a profane person. And he sold his birthright for one morsel of meat. Just a little bit of temporary satisfaction was enough for him to discard all spiritual discernment all spiritual endeavor all spiritual hunger was set aside to scratch one little itch just one little moment in his life and he cast aside everything that God had put a premium on Abraham I'm going to give this to you and I'm going to give it to your seed and it became Abraham and then it became Isaac and it should have been Esau but instead he was profane and the way that he was profane is that he counted spiritual things to be common
Hallelujah. Let me preach to this congregation. Praise God. Praise God. Spiritual things became common. Coming to church was became an effort. It became an obligation rather than an opportunity and a privilege. Spiritual things. You can lay your convictions aside for a little bit of momentary pleasure. Can I get plain here tonight? Can I get plain? We're living in a world of Pentecost that's lost the fear of the things of God. We've lost the value of spiritual things. We don't go around with our minds set on God very much anymore. We've got a thousand other things on our mind. And we're busy about it all the time. You go ahead, do it your way if you want to. But Esau sought carefully with tears a place of repentance. But he never could get it back uh, because when God offered it to him he counted it as something that was profane uh, I've got this on my spirit tonight uh, I want God uh, I want the things of God uh, I want the holiness of God I want the direction of God's spirit I'm looking for his power to come into the congregation I'm looking for there to be an apostolic revival I'm looking for folks Folks to get delivered and folks to get healed and folks to get changed. I had a dream one time, Brother Davis, and in my dream I was standing by the pulpit. It's a pulpit fashion much like this one and I was standing on this side of the pulpit in my dream and and I was preaching and I lifted up my eyes and when I did the spirit of the Lord filled the house and I watched them like cordwood as they were laid out and stacked up and then I in my dream I saw myself laying on the floor and the glory of God was in that house so powerful and so strong and so so rich that, that I woke up from that dream trembling in my spirit and I have never forgotten it and I have never let it go and I have never stopped looking for the service where it's going to happen. I have never stopped looking for the congregation that's that hungry for God. I have never stopped looking Looking for the service that has that much anointing in it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm almost tempted to get sidetracked here. You come back tomorrow night. I'll preach a little bit more. Maybe you'll hear what you want to hear. But I'm going to tell you what I feel tonight. God is reaching for a people. I've made up my mind. I don't, I don't know what time it was, Brother Garza, but I know that I had run out of things to do in the motel room where you placed us tonight. And I said to myself, I have got to go where the Spirit of the Lord is wont to be there. I have got to go where prayer is wont to be made. And I made my way into this auditorium and I got just a little ways from the back back there. And there were just a a handful of people in this building at that time uh, and maybe just one or two of them were breathing a prayer and the rest were here reverently watching and waiting for the service to begin but I promise you in the Holy Ghost that as soon as I knelt down uh, as soon as my knees touched that carpet uh, I felt that old familiar touch of the Lord uh, as it began to roll through my spirit uh, and I knew in my heart uh, that this was a place uh, where the glory of God uh, is familiar uh, I knew in my heart uh, that this is a place uh, where there's some folks that have really been praying uh, and talking to God in the spirit uh, I tell you there's nothing like that kind of a place uh, there's nothing like a church uh, that has that familiar touch of God. There's nothing like a people where you can feel the closeness of the Holy Ghost. Oh. 
Oh, I can't stand it when you lock the door Sunday night at the church. And by the time you go back to open it for midweek service, there's a musty smell in there because nobody's been in the building and nobody's been touching God and nobody's been praying. But I like that kind of a place where you can pull up on the parking lot any time of the day or night. In the wee hours of the morning, there'll be some man, some woman, some young person on their face before God talking to the Lord. You can go by in those cars in the parking lot. You can get there in the early morning and you hear men with their gravelly voices talking to the Holy Ghost and getting ready for the day. I like that kind of atmosphere. In that kind of atmosphere, the Holy Ghost is going to come. In that kind of an atmosphere, the anointing of the Lord is going to sit upon every service. I know you've been in contact with him, but a few, a few months ago, Brother Davis and I were privileged to be in, in a meeting north of here. And Brother Davis preached that night, and it was supernatural. And he had a baby blanket, and he talked about blowing on the blanket. And that night, the Holy Ghost began to move. And the pastor of that assembly got under a burden about that service. And that became the service, the message that he began to hang on to. Amen. And he called me. I talked to him this morning on my way to this meeting. And I said, how, how's it going now? And he said, Brother Garrett, since that meeting, since that message, 39 people have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 39 people have prayed through to a new experience. He said the Sunday night service started almost three hours before the time announced. And by the time they got to the starting time, into the back door walked a brand new couple bound by drugs and alcohol. Their home was beat up and broken up, but they walked through the back door door and they never stopped walking and they walked all the way to the altar and they repented of their sins before the service could get going they got water baptized in Jesus name before the service could move they had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost I'm talking about old paths. I'm talking about apostolic heritage. I'm talking about a visitation of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I'm tired of going to dry services. I'm tired of going to dead church. I'm tired of going to empty meetings. I'm tired of getting into dry carnal homes. I'm tired of fellowshipping with carnal people. I'm tired of finding lukewarm Pentecostals. I'm tired of trying to beat the devil off of homes that don't know what consecration is. I'm tired of watching folks come in and go out. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. I'm looking for a visitation of the Holy Ghost. Everybody the Bible said that came into his presence that were afflicted got healed and everybody that had a devil got it cast out. God is still the same. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Away with your dead letter. Give me Holy Ghost anointing. Away with your empty service. Give me Holy Ghost anointing. Away with your empty songs of shout, shout, shout all night. I'm sick of them. I want to hear something that moves my spirit to God. Away with carnal church that starts on the dot and ends empty. I'm tired of going to meetings where there's more confusion than direction.
Is there a man in this house that's hungry for God for your family? Is there a husband in this house that's hungry for God? Hungry for God? Is there a lady in this house that's hungry for a visitation of the Holy Ghost for your children? Is there a woman in this house that wants to stand with her husband and say, I've got to have a visitation of God? Is there a man that said, I'm going to hold up the hands of my pastor? Is there a man that said, I want to have an apostolic revival? Is there a man that said, I will answer the call of I'll quit walking in the spirit or in the flesh and start walking in the spirit. Are there some ladies that will lay aside this old world and take up a cross and follow the Lord Jesus Christ? Are there some people that will walk in the spirit? Oh, let's cry aloud. Come on. Come on. Lift up your voice. Come on, is there anybody led by the Spirit? Is there anybody led by the Spirit? Is there anybody willing to overcome the inhibition and say, no, I'm not leaving this house the same way I came. I want somebody to get some deliverance tonight. I don't want them to go home hurting the way that they came. They've got to have the touch of God in their life. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is in this house. Can you get up from your pew? Can you make it to an altar? Can you lay before the Lord? Can you cry out in the Holy Ghost? Can you beg? Can you plead with the Spirit tonight? Bring somebody with you when you come. Stop by and bring them to an altar with you. The Holy Ghost is moving in this house. Come on, if you're a spiritual man, you ought to get up from where you're at. You ought to make your way to this altar. You ought to come with your heart. If you're a spiritual woman full of discernment, you ought to be coming to this altar saying, Dear God, move in me tonight. Come on, church, pray. Some of you good ladies do exactly what you're doing. The Holy Ghost is speaking to her. 
the Spirit of the Lord God is moving on her. Come on. Keep coming. Keep coming. Ushers, you help us out. Keep ordering here tonight, please. This doesn't need to become a traffic aisle. It needs to be a Holy Ghost, a Holy Ghost anointed sanctuary. Oh!